Hey, what up guys? Welcome back to my blockchain channel. And today we're going to talk about Web 3.0 and what connection Ethereum has to Web 3.0. Uh, so let's get into it guys. Maybe you've heard about Web 3.0 before, but you you didn't really uh, understand the connection to Ethereum and how does it have, what does it have to do with Web? Uh, and that is what we're going to talk about. But before we can understand Web 3.0, we need to understand Web 1.0 and 2.0. Uh, so Web 1.0 is the original web that was developed back in the 80s. And at, at that time, you as a user had a one-way communication with the server. Basically, you did a request and you received some text or maybe you received an image if your internet connection was good enough. And that was it. So Web was very much read a read-only architecture where you simply just uh, receive the data from a server and you can view it in your browser uh, and when of course when it first uh, arrived it was very exciting and uh, very useful because it was new technology and it enabled things that uh, previously were impossible now you could share doc documents and images with uh, anyone in the world however guys however we as human beings we like progress we like uh, building stuff and uh, finding new use cases. So as soon as uh, Web 1.0 got uh, some adaptation, we wanted to add more features to, to the web. Uh, suddenly we wanted to communicate with each other through the, through the web, not only viewing images and pictures. Now uh, we wanted to send messages to our friends and we wanted to upload images ourselves and create social networks and blogs and uh, share music. And so that is where Web 2.0 developed. So when we say Web 2.0, we mean uh, the web that can handle social networks. For example, I can send a message to my friend or I can s send a music file to my friend and where we have the social networks uh, and I create accounts on different websites. So that is really web 2.0. And that is the archi architecture we have today. Today we are basically living in Web 2, 2.0. Uh, and so if I want to send a message to my friend, I have to first send my message to a central entity, such as Facebook. And then Facebook can send my message to my friend. Uh, so we have this middleman all over the place. Facebook is one example. Uh, Airbnb is another example where if I want to rent a room from my friend, I need to go through Airbnb and they take a cut and that is their business model. Uh, so uh, that is really the case we are, we are experiencing today. We have all these middlemen and the huge, huge companies that, uh, that have been built on, uh, on being the middleman. And... Uh, that is really where Web 3.0 comes in with Ethereum and with blockchain technology. So in this video, I will not talk a lot about blockchain technology and Ethereum. Uh, you can, um, on, on the technical side, uh, how, how it works uh, uh, under the hood. You can watch my previous videos on blockchain and Ethereum in, and I will link them in the description. But on a more practical note, what the Ethereum and the blockchain technology allows us to do is to skip the middleman. We can write applications on the web uh, that are executed in a decentralized matter, meaning that if I write some code, if I write a, a website or an app or anything, this app will not be executed on a central server. This app will be executed on many different nodes in, in the network and we don't have any central entity that executes this app and then just sends the output to, to the users. Uh, this app is now executed on many different nodes and this way it gives us several advantages, several benefits. One benefit is um, uh, security. And that means that there is no way to take down this decentralized application. There is no central server that you can go to and shut down. 
uh, so that is the reason number one. And the reason number two, or the benefit number two, and the advantage number two, is that we have other business models. So because we don't have a middleman, there will be no business model to, to being this middleman. Instead, we develop new economies. And that is, we, we, see, it, we see it already, guys. For example, on the social network si site Steemit, you earn money by posting, uh, uh, posting uh, articles or writing articles or posting links. So you can actually earn money from the blockchain. And we really have to switch our mindset because when it comes to economy, when it comes to the blockchain, because now the value is in the network. If I want to do something on, for example, uh, Ethereum, I need to spend uh, Ether. And uh, similar, similarly, if I want to do something in a decentralized application, I will have to spend the coins that are used in this decentralized application, most likely. And uh, this way, we have a business model where uh, the coins is the value and the users that use the network bring the value to the network. Because if you have a network or an application where a lot of users are coming in and doing different things, of course, the coins that are used in that network will become more, more val valuable. And so you... As a developer, if you have developed this application that is getting more and more popular, uh, the chance, chances are that you have a large amount of these coins that rise in value. So there you have a, an example of a business model that could work on, on the blockchain. And we also have this site called Steemit where you can actually earn money by posting good uh, content. And so if people like your content, you earn, uh, you earn Steam coins. And so what I want to, the point I want to make is that we as users get the value from the network, not the central huge company, but all of the users get the value that is produced in, in the network and we get the economic value that is produced in the network. Guys, that being said, there are a lot of challenges. It's not all rainbows Rainbows when it comes to, <laughs> to, to the blockchain and Web 3.0. And some of the challenges that I see today with blockchain and uh, Ethereum is number one, uh, performance. The performance is a bit slow. It's way too slow for, uh, uh, for worldwide adaptation. And as we talked yesterday in my video about sharding, uh, the Ethereum uh, virtual machine, the Ethereum computer is currently running on uh, running 15 operations per second. And that is very low compared to a normal computer. And if you want to know more about performance and Ethereum, you should go back and watch my video from yesterday. I will also link that in the description. And so that is the problem number one, uh, performance. And there, there are ways to solve it. And that is also something we talked about yesterday. So go ahead and click in the description on, on the video from yesterday about sharding. But what, what I want to say in this video about performance is that it, it is natural uh, evolution of, um, of a technology. If we think about the internet, when the internet came, it was slow to do email until it developed and uh, now everyone could use email. Uh, and then everyone wanted to uh, stream videos from the net. And uh, fr in the beginning, it was a bit slow to, sl to stream videos, but then we developed the internet so now we can stream videos. And so when the videos were uh, fixed and added to the internet and the internet now, now could handle videos, we wanted to do HD videos. And when we did HD videos, now we wanted to do uh, live calls, video calls. And so the internet was slow for that in the beginning, but now we have internet that can handle live calls. And so this example is, uh, is given by Andreas uh, 
uh, the Greek guy, Andreas, I I'm not sure what his last name is, but he's a famous um, Bitcoin uh, supporter. And he gave this example in one of his interviews, and we which I think is uh, uh, really, is which is a really good example. And now we're seeing uh, performance problems in uh, Bitcoin because it's, it's, it's got so much exposure and so ma many people are using it right now. So we see performance uh, issues uh, because of the scale that Bitcoin has uh, evolved to. However, I'm sure that they will fix these scale issues uh, like Internet did, did back in the days when it was too slow for images and then it could handle images and then it was too slow for video and then it could handle video and HD video. So it's the, the performance issue is I think is a natural evolution of a new technology. And this issue is present in Ethereum as well. So as we mentioned, right now it has low uh, number when it comes to op operations per second, but I'm sure the technology will evolve and we will find new ways to, to execute this decentralized application in such a way that we can increase uh, the speed. So I'm sure that we will solve it. However, it's a problem as of today. And the second problem, so that was the first problem with Web 3.0 and the blockchain technologies performance. And the second problem that I see is privacy, because all of the data is distributed across all of the nodes. So how can I as an enterprise, as a business owner, secure my secrets on the blockchain? Is that even possible? Of course, I can do encryption and uh, encrypt my data, but where do I store the encryption keys is the next question. If maybe I want to store them in the blockchain, uh, or maybe that's a bad idea. So th there are a lot of um, questions that uh, arise when it comes to security on, uh, or not security. Security is uh, the strength of a blockchain technology, but pr privacy. Uh, a lot of questions that co when, when it comes to privacy, how can we make our secrets safe on the blockchain? Is it really a good use case for the blockchain? And so guys, my question to you, now when we have described web 1.0, 2.0 and 3.0, guys, do you think that web 3.0 and decentralized applications and Ethereum will replace web 2.0 completely? So web 2.0 is where we are today, where we talk to a central entity, a server, for example, Facebook, and uh, th this server does all of, all of the logic for us. All the application code is executed on the server. Uh, and Web 3.0 is where all the application code is uh, executed on all of the nodes and we don't really have a central entity. So back to the question, guys. Do you think that Web 3.0 will uh, replace Web 2.0 altogether? Or do you think that they will... Uh, Co operate uh, together, that we will have some applications that are impossible to make decentralized, that, uh, that, that will continue to be centralized and have a central server. That is a very interesting question that I ask myself. Uh, will Web 3.0 and Ethereum replace all of the current architecture on the internet? Will this be the default architecture, the decentralized architecture? Or will it be just a sub, like a sub uh, part of the internet where Web 2.0 is the most used? Uh, or will it be equal or will Web 3.0 be most used and Web 2.0 will be this less popular architecture? Guys, leave your opinions in the comment section below. It will be really interesting to hear your uh, uh, thoughts on this question. And if you are a new viewer, guys, and you like blockchain, you like Bitcoin, you like Ethereum, you like technology, and you really want to understand how blockchain technology works and how Ethereum works, uh, you should subscribe to this channel because you will find it interesting. I myself am a software developer and I post videos every single day, guys. And as I mentioned before, there are a lot of, I have done many videos in the past about how Ethereum works, how blockchain works and uh, how performance on the blockchain is, um, in what state is performance on the blockchain and what, what, uh, what technologies are going to boost the performance of 
Ethereum blockchain. And I have these, uh, those videos in the description. So if you're interested, take a look at those. That's it for today, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.